Is it Sunday night at 8 p.m.? Because I could have sworn it was prime time. This week on the Mountain Bike Build Series, I'm gonna prep this baby and then I'm gonna shoot some primer on it so that we'll be ready to then do the fun and wacky paint. Let's get into it. If you're just joining us, uh, over the last like six months we've been doing videos about designing and building this frame from nothing. Uh, from my cranium, I pulled the design and we bent tubes, welded them, all that stuff. And uh, now we're, we're getting in toward paint. And so uh, this is the shop where I make some uh, Cobra frame building tooling and also where I do these uh, YouTube videos every week. And so uh, we, we wanna get this thing ready for paint because we want the paint to stick. Now I'm gonna do a DIY rattle can paint job with spray bike paint. And so uh, I'm not that concerned about like having a super high quality legacy paint job that like withstands all sorts of abrasion and crap and, and stays looking minty. That's not really my first priority. My first priority is making it relatively easy, having fun with it, showing you guys and making it look kooky and, and cool. And so uh, I'm not gonna be as careful as you would need to be if you really wanted to do great paint work. And so there are like professional bike painters and uh, anyone who paints anything who's good at it will tell you that like, you know, really the prep work is the hard part. You know, like whether you're painting a house or you're painting a car or whatever, the prep work is always way more important or at least equally important to anything else that you do. Because if it's not clean and if it's not like, you know, sanded and if you don't scrape off the old paint or whatever the process is that you're using, uh, the prep work is always super important. It's usually very boring and tedious. It's not the fun part and it doesn't look like you're getting any work done. So amateurs always gloss over the prep. And uh, to be honest, I feel a little bit like I'm going to gloss over some of the prep here, which is to say that I will do the prep steps, but I'm just not going to be as thorough as you would be if you were really trying to do your best work. Because for me, like I said, it's not a high, high quality uh, thing. It's more about the, the broad strokes of it. So ideally, with a frame like this, uh, you would sandblast it. And a sandblaster, they come in different varieties, but basically it's like an enclosed thing that has uh, ventilation to pull the dust out, and you have sand that recirculates and compressed air and like a venturi or something, and it, it pulls in like the, and it's not necessarily just sand, sometimes it's like walnut media or it's the, the glass beads or whatever it is. And you're like abrading the surface, it's kind of how it sounds, you're like shooting sand or some other media at it. And that will like remove like this sort of mill scale or whatever and rust and different things off of the surface. It'll give you this uniform gray texture. And then, uh, and then you just have to worry about the dust that it leaves behind. And like there's, you can see some oils and stuff here from where I was like reaming the seat tube. And so um, ideally you would have the sandblaster and I don't own a sandblaster. I used to work somewhere that, that we had one and I used that once for some bikes and that was pretty cool. I don't have access to that anymore. I don't work there. So, um, I'm doing it with really low tech stuff. This is emery cloth, which is basically like a, a cloth. It's one inch wide. This is 80 grit. And, um, and so, you know, it's like sandpaper on the front and cloth on the back. And you can, uh, you can shoe shine stuff. And so what we're looking for is like bright, shiny metal or something, right? You just wanna mechanically etch the surface so there's like a little bit of a tooth there to hold on to, to what you spray on it. And, um, and then I'm also gonna be a little bit more than that. You know, I'm gonna try and get everywhere looking good. And for the spots like under these cable guides that I can't get at as well, I'll get more creative, you know, with like a little poker and some uh, scotch bright or something, whatever. Just try and make it mostly look pretty clean. And then I gotta wipe the oils and stuff off of the surface. So, uh, so I, first, it's gonna take forever. We're not gonna show that much of it, but uh, I'll be going around trying to clean up the surface with this stuff. So this is green scotch bright, and I'm using this now that I have the emery cloth has done the bulk of the heavy lifting. And uh, this stuff conforms a little bit more and you can get it in tighter spots. And um, I'm really not trying to make this too perfect uh, like you would need to if you really cared. But uh, this is a pretty quick way to continue to get in the grooves and stuff uh, that you can't so easily access with emery cloth. I need a way to hang this 
from the ceiling of the paint booth while I'm shooting paint on it. And uh, this is what I've rigged up. I took a piece of welding wire down to the C-tube and then I looped it around a nut. And so that's not going anywhere. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. And by having this wire come up through more or less the center of the frame, uh, that way the frame will be kind of upright as it hangs. Whereas if you hang it so that it's like upside down or something, which is probably a fine way to shoot paint on a bike, but if it's right side up, I think it's a little bit easier to get good coverage on the top side of things. It's a little bit more likely you might get runs on the bottom. And so like, it's gonna hide your, I think it might help you hide your mistakes. I don't really know. Uh, but but also just, I think it's a, it should be pretty well balanced like this. And so this is how I'm gonna support it from the ceiling and the paint booth. And now I wanna clean everything. This is called uh, wax and grease remover. And we're gonna put it on this paper towel. Then we're gonna rub it around and just try and clean like the, the oils and crap off of the frame. And uh, we'll be about ready to get in the paint booth and whoosh, shoot it on. So in the commercial building where I rent space for my shop, this is just on the other side of the wall. Uh, the landlords make cabinets and stuff and they use this paint booth to spray cabinets and whatever. And so uh, conveniently I can use this, you know, paint booth with actual ventilation. So I'm going to do that for this. I got it hanging from the ceiling and I got gloves on and I can kind of spin it around and whatever. And I'm going to turn on the, that's like a big exhaust fan that pulls the gases outside. And uh, I'm going to try and get a halfway decent coverage with the rattle can here. And I got this guy on for, for safety to protect my lungs. And uh, I wish there was a little bit more light, but I um, can't complain to have free access to a paint booth. Let's get into it. So I'm nobody's frame painting expert, but uh, I'm just going to explain my thought process here, uh, basically. So like I'm thinking of the tubes as long, straight lines for the most part. And I'm trying to paint from like one end of a tube to the other with these consistent strokes, trying to maintain a consistent distance uh, from you know the the rattle can to the thing and point so that I'm kind of shooting a my my fan of paint or whatever a, a perpendicular to the surface of the tube and um, you know I'm trying to start you know I press the button down to start shooting the paint after I'm already kind of moving my hand uh, otherwise you know you'll get like spots at the start and the end of your strokes or whatever. Um, it's, it's a little tricky at the joints and stuff. If you were just painting individual tubes, like for like a wind chime or something, I feel like that would be a little bit easier. But here, you know, so I'm, I'm mainly trying to do long, uh, strokes along the length of the tube, you know, for these solid, solid colors or for primer or something. Here, I'm trying to like kind of dust some paint underneath those zip tie brazons, which is tricky. They're really, it's kind of impossible to get full paint coverage underneath those without also getting too much paint. Uh, on the surface of the tube, but you know, I'm trying trying to make it kind of consistent because the more consistent you can lay the paint down the more consistent it's going to look uh, You know the way that I'm supporting the frame is a little bit awkward. I think having it on a fixed mount would be helpful uh, You know, maybe supporting it by the bottom bracket. I also could have used masking uh, masking tape and paper and stuff to mask off some of the like uh, component um, interfacing parts, you know, like the C-tube and stuff. And I think I'll do that for the other uh, subsequent coats. And if I have to uh, clean some of that up with abrasives or razor blade or something, it's not a huge, huge problem, but uh, I guess it's easier to just mask that stuff off in the first place. One of the things you run into is like the overspray. Uh, if, you're, if you're at the correct distance from the tubes and stuff when you're spraying, then it'll lay down wet and it'll kind of wet out and stick if you do everything right. But where, where you're overspraying, like I'm shooting on the bottom bracket, the stuff that's landing further away on the frame, I think, uh, I think has more time to sort of dry midair. And when it lands, now it might be more of like a granular particulate sitting on the surface. Uh, and so like you get this grainy crappy texture and so if it's not your final coat You know, you just kind of scuff it off with a scotch Bright pad or something before you do the next coat and uh, you clean it up but um some of that overspray dustiness uh, can be a drag and um, Yeah, I don't know. I'm not that good at this. I've, I've painted cabinets a fair amount um, And so I have some familiarity with you know spray gun technique and stuff But I'm just bike frames are hard especially if you really care and you're trying to do that show worthy finish quality 
And it's, it's hard to get in like above the seat stay bridge is really hard to get at without getting too much other places behind the brazons. Um, just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tricky thing to do. Well, I'm, uh, you can see with the little squiggly moves that I'm doing there. I'm like trying to, that, that's kind of a hack. I'm just not very good at this stuff, but you know, I mean, it's doing okay. It's, it's looking all right there. I'm, I'm clearing out the little plastic straw inside of the can. Uh, you know, if you flip the can upside down, you pull the trigger, you clear out the paint that's inside of that straw that brings it to the, to the spray nozzle. And, uh, that way your can is less likely to be clogged when you go to use it the next time. So next, we're going to start shooting the wacky and whimsical uh, and fun colored top coat, multiple color paint job. And um, I might need to shoot another coat of primer before then, I'm not sure. If I do, I'll just scuff it down with Scotch-Brite when it's fully dry and then shoot another layer. And I, uh, the instructions are not printed on the can, I haven't read them yet. So uh, whether or not I do another coat, uh, it'll basically look like this, except it'll be scuffed down and ready for action uh, on the next video.